One of the tools we use is functional MRI and what we do is we have patients with dementia of different kinds listening to music and other types of sounds um, in the scanner where we measure their brain activity changes and we compare the changes in the disease groups with those in healthy people of the same age. Now the reason we, we do this, yeah, there's several reasons. Um, from a clinical perspective, we'd like to understand why it might be that people with dementia can continue to understand and derive pleasure from music, and maybe even begin to think about how you would design a treatment that might exploit that. But then from a more scientific perspective, we'd like to ask what can music tell us about the nature of these brain diseases? And because there are particular sorts of um, uh, processes in the brain that we can only get to using music, we are particularly interested to exploit music to do that. So this is really to help us understand the brain in these brain diseases. And if you think about it, one of the things that music, for example, is, is it's very emotionally resonant often. It involves often a sense of familiarity. It may also involve a strong sense of memory and the reanimation of memories. And aside from all of that, it's a very complicated signal that the brain has to be able to deconstruct. And so all of these aspects of music will give us particular sorts of information. And we know from work that we've done in uh, the lab at the Dementia Research Centre uh, at UCL and also from the work that's been done by other groups that um, particular sorts of dementia diseases have characteristic profiles of change uh, when they, patients with those diseases listen to music. For example, patients with Alzheimer's disease often have very well retained emotional awareness of music, but they may lose specific memories of musical events and when they heard particular music, or they may have difficulty understanding more complicated musical pieces and hearing out the different components of the music. Whereas other patients with other diseases like frontotemporal dementia may have very abnormal emotional responses to music, even though their ability to analyze music perceptually is, is intact. And so what we did in the study I talked about at the conference is to design a functional MRI study that would essentially tap these different aspects of music. And we essentially altered the perceptual feature, which was the regularity of the music um, uh, and how regular it was in time and rhythm. We altered familiarity, so we manipulated how familiar the melodies that were being played to the patients were. And we um, also repeated some melodies over the course of the scanning session so we could capture brain changes that were associated with remembering or recalling music. But actually at the point of delivery, all the patients had to do was stay awake in the scanner and listen to the sounds. They didn't have to do anything during the scanning. So we tried to keep the actual design of the experiment as simple as possible um, because we don't want to see changes that might be confounded by other factors like difficulty and task effects, etc. So just to get a basic idea about what some of these very fundamental components of music are doing in different brain diseases. So we studied patients with typical Alzheimer's disease with each of the major variant syndromes of Alzheimer's and also with different forms of progressive aphasia and genetic mutations causing frontotemporal dementia. So a wide range of very well characterised dementia diseases. And when we compared patients' responses to music in the scanner with healthy older people, we saw characteristic patterns, both at the level of the particular sort of um, information that patients could process, but also in different brain diseases relative to healthy older people. So for example, patients with Alzheimer's disease and major Alzheimer's disease variant syndromes have particular difficulty making sense of the timing information in music and in remembering particular music that they'd heard during the scanning session, whereas patients with the non-Alzheimer diseases had much more difficulty with um, familiarity and a sense of sort of knowledge about what when tunes were familiar or not. And this was all reflected in different brain activity profiles in different areas of the brain that we know from previous work are involved in these different types of musical memory and different types of musical perception. So this is obviously one of the first studies of its kind, so quite in that sense quite preliminary. But I think what it's giving us in some ways is quite an exciting picture of really music being able to uncover a very broad range of changes in dementia diseases, not just absence of activation, but also abnormal increases in activation, as we saw in several of these contexts. But also beginning to, to give us a, a, an actual handle in terms of brain physiology on why it might be that music therapy and other interventions might actually work and what types of musical processes we should be targeting in these brain diseases. And I'm certainly hopeful 
that work of this kind will motivate future work both in our group and also in other groups working in these diseases elsewhere in the world.